Hello and welcome to this training video from the EXP Group. Now this is a SEMA E2 Enterprise Management Express course and the aim of this course is to cover some of the core areas, some of the key areas within the syllabus. The first thing I'd recommend you do though is to go to our website which is www.theexpgroup.com and download a copy of our free Express Notes. These are free of charge and we will be basing this express video course on those express notes. Okay, let's have a quick look then at Chapter 1. Chapter 1, Strategic Management and Assessing the Competitive Environment. Okay, let's go down to the big picture and see what this is all about. As it says here, this, this chapter introduces, introduces us to a variety of methods of analyzing the competitive environment faced by an organization. So in other words, it identifies, it helps us identify what environment an organization is operating in. And this, for example, can be used to help identify potential ways forward in terms of their strategy. Okay, let's get going and we'll have a quick look at the first one, which is called pestle analysis. Now, this should be familiar to you from um, paper E1. It was covered briefly in paper E1. Pestle analysis is sometimes known as pest or slept analysis, sometimes even le pest analysis, but in effect, it's the same thing. And what pestle analysis does, it examines the external macro environment. And as we say here, the, the company, the organization, is unlikely to be able to influence the pest or factors, but it should have an awareness of these issues. Okay, what does pest or stand for? Well, we have P for political, E for economic, S for social. If we go down to the next page, we have technological, environmental, and legal. Just to highlight a couple of points within here, well, political, um, obviously we have, for example, what are the relationships between certain countries? How does that impact on an organization? Then we have economic. A good point here is to make sure, if you can, you can link to topical issues, such as the recession, coming out of the recession, for example. Social, what's happening um, in regards to demographics, lifestyle. One, one fairly common example of a movement in the social side of things in a lot of countries are people are becoming more health conscious, health aware, for example. They're aware of the need to exercise to eat healthily. How does that impact on your business? If you look at technological, well, um, one big one here, global communications. Technology, advances in technology is making it a lot easier, quicker and cheaper to communicate around the world. Environmental, what's happening with regard to recycling, pollution, attitude of the media in terms of the environmental. And then legal, what are the changes, predicted changes, and included here, for example, regional ones such as EU law, European Union law. Okay, let's uh, go on and look at the the next part of this chapter. This is all about stakeholder mapping. Stakeholder mapping, and remember, stakeholders are people who've got an interest in the business. So stakeholders, individuals, groups, organizations that can impact or be impacted by an organization. In other words, they've got an interest in a particular business. Mendelo's matrix is used for stakeholder mapping. And Mend Mendelo's matrix looks at a stakeholder's level of interest in an organization and a stakeholder's level of power. And that can range from a low to a high, a low to a high. Now, if we look at, for example, a stakeholder that's got a low level of interest and a low level of power, what this mapping technique is doing is saying, what should the management of the organization do for that stakeholder? Well, if the stakeholder in that business isn't really interested in the business and it doesn't have a lot of power, then in simple terms, it shouldn't do a lot. Management should not do a lot. 
The technical term they use in the matrix is minimum effort, minimal effort. If we look at a stakeholder that's got a high level of interest, but a low level of power, then because it's got a low level of power, management shouldn't change their strategy for it. But because it's interested, this particular stakeholder is interested, they should be kept informed. Okay, what about a stakeholder that's got a low level of interest? So they're not really interested in the business, but they've got a high level of power. Well, we should keep them happy, keep them satisfied. Because although they're not interested, they have got a high level of power. So we want to keep them satisfied. And that leaves the final quadrant, quadrant, which is key players. High level of interest, high level of powers. And according to Mendeleev's matrix, those are the stakeholders that we should keep happy. Okay, what about um, employees, for example? Where would employees go within this Mendeleev's matrix? The answer is it depends, because you could have, for example, a temporary employee who's just doing a temporary job, um, fairly low level of interest, low level of power. So that type of employee would fall within minimal effort. Probably the most, the, the vast majority of employees would have a high level of interest, but most employees would have a low level of power individually. So if it's your main job, for example, and you're a junior manager, really interested in the business, fairly low level of power though. What about on the other hand, if you're one of the main board members, well, you're going to have a high level of interest and a high level of power. You could become a key player. So stakeholders can be plotted according to this matrix. Right. SWOT analysis. Let's now look at SWOT analysis. SWOT analysis is a very well known theory. And it stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So SWOT analysis looks at the strengths of a company, the weaknesses of a company. Now, these two are internal. So it's an internal strength of an organization. It's an internal weakness of an organization. The opportunities and threats are external. So in other words, it's an opportunity that applies not just to the company we're looking at, but other organizations, other com companies. And the same with threats. Now, a key thing you should do in SWOT analysis is make sure that whatever strengths, whatever weaknesses, whatever opportunities or threats you identify, they are linked to the situation in the exam. So don't just talk about theory, make sure it's linked to it. OK, as an example, um, Apple, the company Apple, you've all heard of Apple, very, very well known, very successful um, company, sells the Apple iPhone, iPad, etc. Now, if we try to think, right, what are the what are the strengths of Apple? Well, I would say, for example, brand, image, reputation, distribution channel. Those are all examples. What about weaknesses? Well, there's been a lot in the press that um, Steve Jobs, they're, they're heavily reliant on one guy. Now, that's quite a weakness, or at least a perceived weakness, given a company that size. Whether or not it's true, you know, we don't really know as outside observers. What opportunities are there? Well, this kind of hits it quite well on the head. Arrival of new technology. So Apple are very much at the forefront of technology, so there should be quite a few opportunities coming along. Threats, though. Arrival of maybe cheaper substitute products. Maybe the opening up of Google's Android system could be a threat to Apple. OK, so that's just a very quick look through um, SWOT analysis. And that now completes our first video on this Express course. The next video will continue with this chapter, so thank you very much for listening.